Well, hey, friends, uh, good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. Embracing our uh, tomorrows with joy and with optimism, friends. Looking at these next three to five years, I want you to know that I am excited. It is with anticipation that I enter into this. Because I'll tell you, life is always renewing. Life is always remaking oneself. No matter what age we are, that's true. Life is always about remaking oneself, renewing oneself. It's true for individuals, folks, and it's also true for congregations. Let me tell you how I envision this ride that we've now embarked upon. And then I want to tell you where I believe great joy and optimism really come from. I am a roller coaster loving kind of guy. It brings me a great joy. I got to tell you, great joy. It brings great excitement to me to get buckled in on that uh, wild thing, roller coaster in Valley Fair. I actually envision as, as those cars roll off the platform and begin that steep incline, that slow, steep incline to the pinnacle where you just kind of go over, I envision getting through the ride and standing back on that platform ready to move on to others' adventures. And I know as those, as, as those cars come back onto the platform and I get off, folks, there is a sense of breathlessness. There is a sense, a gratitude of being in one piece <laughs> and, and being an exhilarated. Those eight initiatives that we have writing teams putting flesh on onto their bones... Uh, right now, folks, those initiatives that range from, from wor- our worship life together to, to hospitality to, to mission, local, regional, international, they have great potential to recharge, to renew and reconnect this congregation. Now I recognize that, uh, that the title of this message, Embracing Our Tomorrows with, with Joy and, and Optimism, can be seen as a, as, a, as a positive attitude, kind of cheerleading, you know, kind of rah-rah, we can do it, yeah, we can. But I'll tell you, friends, our, uh, our joy as Christians, our joy as a Christian community, our optimism... It goes a whole lot deeper uh, than just that, that rah-rah, just feel if you just believe you can. Folks, it's our conviction that when we allow God into the mix, when we allow God into the mix, it will be okay. St. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say it, rejoice. Have you ever thought of joy as a command? Rejoice in the Lord, Paul is saying. He's saying it to a congregation. He's saying you've come here together, rejoice. And and what a splendid attitude that is to, to, to bring into worship in this place. When you come through the doors, rejoice. Rejoice because you're in God's house now. It's time to, to lay aside your worries. 
to lay aside your heartaches. Be done with your resentments. Dry your tears. Forget about your hurts. When you come through the door, to lay them at the foot of the cross. To focus on Christ, on his promises, his presence, his purpose for our lives. To focus on Christ and to rejoice. Now, I know that's easier said than done, perhaps. But I would need you to know this morning that whatever you're going through, that that's God's will for you this morning. Rejoice. You aren't alone. We aren't in this thing called life alone. We're part of something much bigger than ourselves. And we gather here this morning and we rejoice in that conviction. Folks, these words were written by a man who somehow learned to put life into a perspective. Paul knew better than, than many of us that life is like a roller coaster. It has its ups, it has its downs, and it throws you from one side to another. He's rejoicing here. Not because of some positive mental attitude. He's not rejoicing here because he's okay and we're all okay kinds of stuff. That's not why Paul's rejoicing. He's rejoicing because he knows that God is in control. And he'll take that to the bank. It's not just any kind of cheerful, good mood he has here. He's rejoicing in the Lord. He's rejoicing in the Lord. His strength, his refuge, his salvation. Because I want you to notice what Paul says next. He says, the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Bring them to God. Folks, you and I, we are going to water. We're going to water this strategic planning project. We're going to water this renewal campaign in prayer. I'd like to invite you to come join me on Sunday mornings to get here a little bit earlier than you normally do, to get here 7 o'clock in the morning in the chapel here every Sunday morning, gathered in the chapel for prayer, prayer uh, for this congregation, prayer uh, for individuals. I invite you to come join with me on, on Tuesday mornings at 1045 in the chapel to pray uh, for this congregation and to pray uh, for individual uh, needs. Because we're convinced, folks, I am convinced. I'm convinced and, and I'm thankful we're thankful for the eternal gift of God's love. And that God's not finished with us. What I love about this text from Philippians is that this message was written to a church, to a congregation. It's message of rejoice! Rejoice! Don't come in with sour faces. Don't, don't be, don't... Rejoice. God's intention 
Christ said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly, that there's a spirit that comes upon us. That people might say, you've got something that I don't have. He's writing to this church and he's saying, rejoice. He could have written it to an individual. And in other parts of the scriptures, indeed, he he does. The text from from, from John today talks about Jesus. Blessing and, and, and encouraging a joy upon his disciples there. But today, here it's written to a community of faith. Christians. Christian congregations rejoice because God is in control. That's the conviction that we gather here. It's not about our agendas. It's about God's. It's not about coming here today to be entertained. It's about coming here today to give praise to the Almighty. Because all that we are and all that we have is truly a gift ultimately from God. And I'll tell you, when that strikes and we say, yeah, that changes the way we look at our daily lives. Christians rejoice. They they rejoice and they they get excited about the future. Even though you don't know what the future is going to bring, we get excited about the future because Christ's cross shows us God's heart. But Christians also rejoice because they are part of Christ's body. We're part of something bigger than just ourselves. We're part of family. I got to tell you, friends, that's a happy, that is a hopeful thought as we embrace it. That we're there for one another. We laugh together in the good times. We're there for one another in the hard. We're family. Here's my continuing vision for us as a congregation, as this community of faith known in these parts as Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Someone once said to me a long time ago, and it has been, it, I always thought it was a beautiful insight, and that is that joy requires close company, community, and connectedness. You and I, we may have many satisfying experiences by ourselves, but to experience joy, we've got to do it in company. That's why worship. That's why small groups, folks. That's why why serving others, those things are so satisfying to our souls. Anytime we move out of ourselves and connect with another human being in the name of Jesus Christ, joy is possible. That abundant life. So, folks, that's why I'm, I'm... simply optimistic about our future. Even amidst changes that will happen, even as we uh, go in different directions, I'm optimistic about our future. For our joy, our sense of well-being comes from our belief that God is in control of his world and God is in control of this congregation. This is his congregation. It's not ours. Lord, what would you have us be? What would you have us do? Our joy, our sense of well-being, friends, comes from our gratitude for, for what Christ has done in our behalf. Our joy comes Our well-being will come from our participation in this family of Christ. Embracing our tomorrows. Embracing our tomorrows. It's going to be a good ride, folks. (laughs) 
It's going to be a good ride. Come. Get on board. Amen. Let's sing together our hymn of the day. Uh, this is hymn of the day.